It was five years ago on October 23rd, 2016, that I sat down in this very spot, wearing these same clothes actually, where I did my very first video for Freakin' Reviews for the Handy Heater, which was a space heater that came out at that time, which was an As Seen on TV product. I really wasn't sure how I wanted to observe my five-year anniversary, if at all. I, I'd consider a retrospective, but then the thought of sifting through 450 videos wasn't very appealing, so that kind of went by the wayside. So fortunately for me, the makers of Handy Heater came out with a new version in 2021, so what a better way to celebrate my five years by reviewing the new Handy Heater while also flashing back to my original review. And be sure to stick around to the very end where I actually react and review my original video. So without further delay, let's get right to the handy heater, then and now. Today I'm reviewing a product uh, by the name of Handy Heater. There it is. Today I'm reviewing a product by the name of uh, Handy Heater Pure Warmth. There it is. Let's first take a look at the unboxing and then get started. When I first take it out of the box, the first thing I notice is how much bigger the box is than the original. Look how much bigger it is. Over here we got 350 watts, this one's 1200. This one plugs directly into the wall, this one has a cord, it's a little bit different. It's a very different looking design. They say it's good for pretty much any room. Living room, den, kitchen, bedrooms, offices, bathrooms, basements, and more. So it's got three speeds, low, medium, high. Auto off, tip over protection, that's kind of important. Cool touch case, we shall see about that. The secret is cold air goes in, warm air goes out. Not much of a secret there, is it? In fact, it looks more like the uh, the Arctic air than it does uh, the old handy heater. So I'm reading over these instructions here. Looks like there's not much to it. Uh, power button right here that turns on, off, and cycles through the fan speeds. This is your light, which uh, cycles through orange, green, blue, yellow, purple, teal, clear, cycle, and off. There is a filter on the back, which they say to change every three to six months. Very thin. You can, you can see through it. Very thin filter. There is an anti-tip mechanism here that if it tips over, it will turn off. The original didn't need that because it plugged directly into an outlet. Uh, so comparing the two of them, very, very different looking designs. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how it holds up on its own and compare to the original. So one of the challenges I had in my first video was trying to test a space heater in October in the desert when it really doesn't get that cold here, especially in the daytime. So my solution then was to test it in a small bathroom, hoping to raise the temperature a couple degrees. Uh, it didn't really work that well. In fact, I tested it later on, it didn't really work in other situations either. But I do understand the criticisms with that original test. So this time around, I think I got a better solution, a bigger, colder room that should be a more accurate gauge of how well the heater works. So the Handy Heater commercial shows them warming up a cold room from 63 degrees up to 72. Although they don't say how long that takes. Now, even though it's still pretty warm here in Vegas in the daytime, our evenings have been getting below 63 degrees, so I should have no problem duplicating their claims. At my new apartment, I've got an empty room. What I can do is leave the windows open all night, let it cool down there, and try the handy heater out. So I'm heading over there right now to get started. For this location, we're gonna leave the windows open and get it nice and cold in here. But let me show you what this room is set up like for my handy heater test. Here we go. I've emptied the room completely out except for my nectar mattress box. I've got a container down there and I've got a lamp actually that's going to be used to magnetically hold one of my thermometers. Right, let me show you what I'm doing here. I've got the handy heater pure warmth. This is going to be blowing across the room here. This thermometer is actually set up a little bit below its uh, line of fire here. I've got the nectar mattress box about little, almost five feet off the ground, about a 45 degree angle. Another 45 degree angle is this lamp, which I'll show you how it works. It's, I sell on my store. It's kind of an interesting lamp, but that's going to be actually a thermometer holder this time. And in the back of the room, I've got command strip to the wall. I've got one way up here about six and a half feet off the ground. I'm going to get it as cold as I can in here. I'm going to take readings in the beginning at 30 minutes and at one hour. By the way, check this out. Boom. Haven't figured out what to do with this lamp yet, but I do like it. So I'm hoping that having four thermometers kind of spread out throughout the room at different heights, different distances, we can kind of get a gauge of how much the handy heater pure warmth can warm up a room in one hour. So tomorrow morning, I'll get it as cold near as I can. I'm gonna leave these windows open all night and we'll give it a shot. Here we go. Let's close these windows. Let's see what we got here for measurements. We got uh, 58.5 for number one, 56.8 for number two, 
58.8 for number three. Back here, 60.1. There it goes, and we're off. Come back in 30 minutes and do my first check. There you go, first reveal here. See, we got on the thermometer number one, it's definitely warmed up, 65 degrees. Uh, down here, we got 70.7. Number three, we've got uh, 66.2. And in the back, 67.6. We'll come back in another 30 minutes and see how it does. All right, so looking at the results after 30 minutes, it looks like all of them went up about seven, seven and a half degrees, except for number two, which is actually right in front of the unit. That went up almost 14 degrees. But so far, so good. Let's see how it looks in another 30 minutes. All right, it's still chilly out here in the hall. Let's see how it feels in the bedroom. Oh, it feels nice in here. It feels warmer. Well, let's take a look. All right, 69.6, All right, look at the results after 60 minutes. All of them over 10 degrees. In fact, the one right in front of the unit's almost 20. So I would say their claim that can raise the temperature of a room by 10 degrees is accurate. I would say that the handy heater pure warmth did warm this room up by more than 10 degrees. So I think that it's a success at the one hour mark. So if you're wondering if the room may have warmed up without the heater at all, I did run a couple of tests to see if that wasn't the case. So this is by no means scientific, but I did want to see if that was the case. So what I did was turn the handy heater pure warmth off and just let the room sit idle for about an hour and the temperature did start to drop. Check it out. All right, after one hour after turning the handy heater pure warmth off, let's check them out. 67.8, 67.1, 68 68.4, 67.8. So the room is cooling back down after I turn the handy heater off. So I'd say in that case, the handy heater pure warmth did work. All right, so I'm happy that the handy heater pure warmth does warm up a room as they claim, but how does it compare to the original handy heater and a popular space heater on Amazon? I came up with a different test to engage those results in my garage, and here's what happened. All right, let's start with the, the original handy heater. Now, the intake is in the bottom, so I had to put it on something that allow airflow. That's why it's on this. I don't think they advise plugging it in the back, but it should work for this. With the help of my trusty weather meter, I'm going to actually figure out the optimal angle for measuring its airflow. Then I'm putting a thermometer on here, which will measure exactly 24 inches, how much heat you're still feeling. So let's try it out. Make sure we're on high here. We are on high. I'm not getting much at 24 inches at all. So I think this is the spot right up here. It's getting a little bit of movement. Now the point of this test is not if it can warm up this entire garage, because it can't. The point of this test is can it actually provide warmth two feet away? 70.3 is our baseline. Let's see how hot, hot it gets. The air coming out of there is much hotter than 70 degrees, so it should give us some sort of a boost. We shall see. I can kind of feel the air flow this far, but it's pretty weak even at this distance. I was never impressed with the handy heater much anyway, so we'll see. All right, here we go. We're at the, uh, the 15 minute mark. It's still going strong. Uh, here's the temperature at the 15 minute mark, 70.7 and it got all the way up to 71.1 before it dropping back down. Now what I did was I added three heathers over here, kind of control thermometers, which are around the same height. Let's see what they show. 70.5, 70.7, 70 70.5. So really at the two feet mark, the original handy heater isn't really making a dent at all. The other three over there are about the same temperature. I can feel the heat, it's pretty warm up until about, about two feet away, I really don't feel it anymore. I knew I was never impressed by it. All right, so Handy Heater, you're still not impressive. Let's get the new one out here and see how it does. The star of the show here, the Handy Heater Pure Warmth. Let's turn it on first. All right, it starts off on high, so that is on high. Let's try to get the, the right angle here. I'll say at two feet away, I'm getting a much stronger airflow than I was with the original handy heater. Look at this, two miles an hour. I got zero on the original handy heater. So much, much, much more impressive. The extra power is making a big difference here. 
All right, we got the optimal height at two feet, so we'll come back in 15 minutes, see how it compares. And I just reset these, so we should see how they look as well. All right, 15 minute mark, let's see what we got here. And, whoa, 90.3. It's gone up 20 degrees in 15 minutes. And look at the humidity, it started at 27, it's down to 15 now. Let's check the, uh, the control thermometers, what we got here. Humidity unchanged, still about 70.7. .7. Humidity unchanged, 70.5. Humidity unchanged, 70.3. The handy heater, pure warmth, clearly better than the original. An impressive showing. I'm actually quite happy with that. I guess the case is acceptable. It's not too hot. It's warm in some places. It's weird, it's warm in some places and not others. I would say it's cool enough to touch. I can pick it up. It's not, it's not burning my hands, so not too bad. Now let's move on to the next one. This 1500 watt space heater and see how it does. All right, I've got the right distance. I've got the right angle. Let's turn it on and see what happens. As we start, we got exactly 73 degrees. And we're off. We'll see how that goes in about 15 minutes. My control thermometer is 72 and a half, 72.9 and 72.5. So all that half a degree of each other. Let's see how it goes in 15 minutes. Let's see how this 1500 water does compared to the handy heater pure warmth, which did pretty well. Let's give it 15 minutes, come back, see what happens. All right, here we go, 15 minutes, let's see what we got. Whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Wow, and look at the humidity down at 10%. Wow, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. The non ASEAN TV space heater just crushed it. Let's take a look at the control thermometers over here. 72 and a half, 72 and a half, 72 and a half. Uh, that's very impressive by the Polonis space heater. Well, I got to say the Polonis I'm very impressed with. It just gave a master class in personal space heating. Let's see the thermometer. Well, it's still going up. Wow. Well, I guess you see who won that one. All right, so those tests were clearly not supposed to be scientific, more real world tests of the handy heater pure warmth plus others. So I do think that the room test with the handy heater pure warmth does show with those four thermometers spread out throughout the room that it can raise the temperature in a room by 10 degrees in an hour. So I'm pretty confident that that test is pretty accurate. Now, as far as the garage test goes, clearly there's some aspect of the thermometers themselves being heated up by the heater being so close to it, which is one reason why they're showing such extreme results. But I do think that the comparison of how those three heaters affected the thermometers delivers quite useful information. So I applaud the makers of Handy Heater for putting out a superior product to the original one they put out there. And I do think if you buy the pure warmth version based on the advertising, you'll probably like it. On the other hand, the Handy Heater pure warmth is not the only option out there. Based on my tests in the garage, it's clear that there are other space heaters out there that can outperform the Handy Heater pure warmth. And in the case of the Polonis, it's $10 cheaper, it's highly rated, has more watts and seems to run hotter, so it might pay to shop around. So now it's time for me to pull out my laptop and review and critique my original handy heater, my very first video on YouTube, five years and 460 videos ago. So let's check it out. All right, time for my very first video. I'm gonna watch it, react to it, and critique it. So, uh, so here we go. Here we go. Great tunes. Spin. Fast motion unboxing. The table. The table. Spin again. Two cameras. I had two cameras in my first video. Pretty good. Today I'm reviewing a product uh, by the name of Handy Heater. There it is. There it is. It's advertised on television, but you can pick it up in local stores. I found it at a Walmart for about $30. All right, so uh, let me talk about the intro a little bit. Now, the music, I think I had my cousin throw together some samples from a keyboard he just bought, because I didn't know there was free music on YouTube. Also, I didn't clean off my table. It was, I know it's a work table. It's not supposed to be that clean, but I didn't clean it off. Um, also, the intro was interesting because I would do my technique of spin, unbox in fast motion, then spin again, which I, I only did in a few videos. Also, that palm tree behind me is like three times that height now, only five years later. And it had been there for over 12 years at that point, so I don't know why it started growing all of a sudden. But I digress. It's advertised as a space heater that plugs into the wall. And its features are that it has an adjustable timer from 1 to 12 hours, high and low settings, and you can set the temperature you want. Good that I went over the features. That's, that's a good way to start the video. 
All right, nice close up here. Um, it looks decent quality for the cameras I had available. I think this is my Nikon D3200. One of two cameras I used. I'm just pushing buttons here, not explaining what I'm doing. There's no talking. Not even explaining it whatsoever. I'm not I'm not saying anything whatsoever. I'm just I'm just pushing buttons. I, I guess this is helpful, but it's going on for a long time. Very, very long. So what I've done is I've plugged it into the smallest bathroom in my house and I've set it a couple of degrees warmer than it is in there to see if it can actually raise the temperature of the bathroom. I guess that would work. Of degrees. That bathroom is, is very small, so if it can heat a room up to 250 square feet, it should have no problem heating a very small bathroom in, in a you short would hope. Of time. So it's been in there for about 15 minutes. And I'm going to go minutes? check and see if the temperature has raised in the bathroom at all. And I'll come back and check. Am I even in focus there? Okay, hang on a second. So this here comes my first test ever in my first video. I wanted to raise the temperature in the bathroom by a couple of degrees. I figure it's such a small space that that, that tiny heater should at least make a dent in, in a space that small. The problem is that the bathroom is already kind of warm. So it's, it's it maybe not that I would have done a different test now, but that was the test I chose and I'm sticking with it. It's also kind of weird that it's been 15 minutes and I, I didn't show myself setting up the test. I'm just showing myself after it's already done. So that's something else I would do different now. I'm getting nothing on the handy heater. Nothing. It appears to have completely shut off. Um, it's only been there 15 minutes. The temperature in the bathroom did not raise two degrees. I'm gonna see if I can raise the temperature even more and see if it kicks back on. Oh, in the mirror I can see my Sony action cam. That was my second camera back then. I had a D3200 and a Sony action cam. Okay, so it, it did kick back on. The, clearly the internal thermometer is not working properly. That's why it's kicking on and off like that. I'm thinking that maybe the internal thermometer might be off a couple of degrees. As I was saying. Because it shut off. What it said was 80 and my thermometer said 78. So I cranked up to 85 to see when it kicks off. Okay, so should work. update, I went in the bathroom and it had shut off. My thermometer said it was 78 degrees in the bathroom, but the handy heater had a reading of 80. So I don't know if maybe the internal thermometer is off or if it just keeps shutting off. So I raised the temperature and it shut off again like a couple minutes later. So then what I did was I put the timer on for one hour. This is kind of a long explanation, isn't it? So I could have done this a little bit so more compactly. Particular technique works. There is some sound with handy heater. It sounds... Now, if I were filming this video today, I would have just scrapped that whole first test. I would have redone it and I would have just referred back to it. You know, like my first test, I tried in a small bathroom. It didn't really work that well because the temperature was already warm in there. Uh, but here's what I tried. It's useful information, but I'm not sure that that's the best thing for a first test ever in a video. It also, the visual isn't great. And it takes a lot of explanation. So I would probably do it differently now. Kind of like a hair dryer on a very low speed. Obviously on the high setting, that's gonna be a little bit louder than the low setting. The rotating prong, it doesn't have a full 360 range of motion. It basically rotating has prong. two positions, one way or 180 degrees. So you couldn't put it sideways and have it lock in place. There's a lock that you push in and then you rotate it. And then when it goes to one rotating of the 180 prong. degree positions, then it relocks. There is a- Okay, hold on. I got the handy heater over here. I forgot there's a rotating prong on the original handy heater. So I guess this is the lock and you're supposed to turn it. It does turn. I should have shown that in the video. I didn't even show the rotating prong. I, and I forgot it was a feature. I never even used it. Interesting. It's a very slight smell, kind of what you would expect from a hair dryer. Uh, it does, it almost seems like a, a, an oversized hair dryer that plugs in. Not even oversized. It doesn't seem like a space heater, but we'll see if it works as advertised. I've got it in there. It's set to 88 degrees. And we go back to the temperatures timer. again. And it seems like the bathroom may have increase in temperature to 79 degrees we're going to go I'm back in there aren't we so we're going, going back in the bathroom 15 more minutes and see if the temperature raises and if the handy heater stays on well it's been 15 back minutes in the bathroom and the again. handy heater has shut off again i have it set to 88 degrees in a one hour timer and i only show it being 79 degrees in here 79 and a shut off at 88 shocking I'm going to try it uh, in a different Scratch space. My nose. Maybe this is too confined with a wall uh, and the 
the medicine cabinet next to it. So I'm gonna try it in a different area and see if it doesn't shut off like that. I can feel the heat, it's pretty warm. Here we go. Up until about, about two feet away, I really don't feel it anymore. Aha, that's something I can confirm after doing my test for this video, that the two feet mark is about where the handy heater drops off and how warm you can feel it. So even my claims about two feet being the range was accurate even back then, and I can confirm that's still the case. One more uh, issue that I should point out is that when the fan shuts off, the heating element stays lit. It's still red hot and the fan's not blowing. That cannot be a good sign. All right, well, for, first of all, I look like one of those announcers who's trying to talk about a very intense situation, but he has to be quiet. Now I'm in the bedroom and there's a heating element that's not turning off. Um, and that's not a heating element. I actually posted an update about this later on. That's actually an LED light that has a fake heating element and there's nothing really about the instructions I had. So I was confused. I was, I was duped into thinking that was a heating element and it was not. You would think the heating element would go off first and the fan would continue to blow you to cool think. it off, but that's not doing that. It's still, it's still red hot. There's no fan. It's blowing. not red hot. I will say that it does emit some heat that's probably sufficient to warm a small space a very small space the controls seem a little bit confusing like um the high and low don't always seem to work so when you turn Scratch it on my it starts off at 85 degrees and on uh high speed and there are times where it doesn't seem that the low will work while other times low does work it does seem to shut off i don't know if it's overheating or if it thinks that that's if that's just the way it's supposed to work it does shut off regularly. I think it's the, obviously the, um, the, the internal thermometer is off. a defect in the unit that I received, or that's just the way it's designed. It doesn't say anything about Probably a little bit of both. The instructions do say that Handy Heater has a built-in timer that will automatically turn the unit off after a, a set amount of time. But it doesn't tell you what that time is. It does that's say a, later that's a good that point. That's it a good point, James. After 12 hours. I'm not sure if what I'm experiencing is related to this automatic feature that turns it off after a set amount of time. Not a bad so catch. I would say the handy heater is probably not as efficient as other space heaters. Pro probably not. Even though it might be more compact and plugs into the wall, uh, I'm just not convinced the design and the construction are really up to the same standards of other space heaters that I've looked at in the past. And five years later, I, I would agree with that. I suggest buying it locally so that you can evaluate it, and if it doesn't work for you, you can return it without having to pay Buying locally is always a good, a good or option. Or handling costs. Personally, Handy Heater would not be my first choice of a space heater. If you use Handy Heater... Five years later, I'd say it's still not my first choice of a space heater. Cool. Handy Heater is distributed by Ontel products and it is made in China. If you like this review, I would appreciate a subscribe. Um, this is a new channel for the Freaking Reviews Network. Very new channel. It's my first so, video. Um, any support you can have would be greatly appreciated. Any requests for reviews, I would be happy to hear as well. Wow, is that loud? Wow. All right, well, I mean, nobody's first video is our best. I mean, I'm nitpicking and I'm just having fun with it, but I, I did my best. I tried, uh, you know, it was, I, I, even though some of my tests may have, would have been better visually demonstrated, I think that my results were, were accurate. So I give myself credit for that. Well, it's fun to look back at these years later. Maybe I'll five years from now, I'll look back at this video and critique it as well. But it's hard to believe that was five years ago and I've posted so many videos since then. It's kind of shocking how time flies, but well, I appreciate everybody who stuck with me this first five years, and hopefully the next five years are just as fun as the first five years were. I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. I couldn't make this video without acknowledging my co-star, Bailey. Now, she was not in my first video, but let's take a look back at her first appearance on Freaking Reviews. I should also point out that although the advertising highlights its ability to be stuck to surfaces with its adhesive backing, the instructions note that if you want to remove it later, you're going to probably damage the paint. So most people should probably opt to use the mounting screws, which is what I do. Look at Bailey. Good catch.